Hello, my vacuum cleaner chums. How are you today? Ooh. I'm here on a very, very hot 30 degree day, which is rare for the UK, so I'll be short with a glass of water. Ready to strip down and refurbish this. The DC04 that I got from Shite Fest. So, this video should, if it all goes to plan, it doesn't, who knows, strip this into its component pieces. We put the hose and the filter through the washing machine. We need to wash the whole machine, dry it, polish it, fix the hose, reassemble it with new filters and some tools. So, what do we need? Well, we have a parts box, a small tub for non-washable parts, Torx driver, handy flat base screwdriver, and we'll need the belt lifter tool as well. In fact, ooh, I did nearly forget. I'm very unprepared, sorry about this. If I dig around in my toolbox, come on, where I have? To get the switch off of a DC04, you need a bent screwdriver. Oh, I really do need a shave, look at that. Who cares? By not doing that now, I'm not filming myself shaving, no matter how much money you want to pay me. So, DC04, here it is, you can't see it all. Let's take it apart. We need two, first of all. Drop the cable, so twist the cord hook, and done. Then we need to remove the one, take the hose off, remove the wand if I just adjust myself with your flat blade screwdriver, just pop up one side, and then the other side will follow, and there is a spring that you must keep. So we'll pop the spring in there, and in there. Up at the top, we need this cap off, and again, you just pop. Don't even this, uh, a screwdriver is handy. If you need a DC-04 wand, you can buy them brand new, which is handy. These, this is an early, well, I don't think it's early, but it's a British one. It has the metal spring, which you just pull out of its two locating holes. They can rust out and generally be a pain, so it's quite good we got that. I never take the top cord hook off, I don't bother. This one has a bit of damage anyway, but it'll be fine. The crevice tool holder is good. That is a nice one. And we're done with it now as well. So next we need to take the hose off. For that you tip the machine forward and you'll see a yellow bit there with your screwdriver. Push it in and up slightly until that part lifts. And there's the hose off. Examine the hose. This one has a hole. So you can just about see it, it's there. So once this is washed, because this is <coughs> utterly black and disgusting, we shall take it apart. So I'll pop that up there for a moment. Next, take off the cyclone. And just so we can get the washing machine on, because I've got some other stuff to wash, we'll take out the, again, very black. Let's try and get a good before shot of this. <sighs> God knows what that is. Very black filter. So I'm just going to pause, put it on a 70 degree cotton wash and shut the door and come back. There we go. We have two hours and 49 minutes. I just need to adjust my screen down a tad so I can see it. There we go, it's not all black. So we'll put that to one side for now because oh, I do the cyclone separately. So, we have the main cleaner, and let's start by removing the main cable. So, adjust myself, we need to take the on-off switch off. And this is where the bent screwdriver comes in handy, because right at the back, on the flat side, you may or may not be able to, where are you? There you go, there's a little hole. And the idea is to put the screwdriver in that hole, and sort of lift and tease it. It might work better with a, I use a second screwdriver just to sort of pull up the other side. It is very fiddly. There we go. 
There's a little locating tab. They can snap off, sadly. It's a bit of a do or die job, but they do glue on quite well. Top tip, don't replace this until you've tested the machine. So there's a lot of messing about when it doesn't work. You haven't plugged the motor in and you've got to take the whole thing off again. It's a right pain. Tucked under the switch is a screw. Now I'm not carding up the screws on this because they're all the same length. Most, 90% of them are these silver jobs. So I'm just going to chuck them on the pot, but that's only because I've done so many of these that I don't need to card them. I do recommend you card them. So that was the switch housing screw, because that releases the switch housing. So that's what it all looks like. There we go. What we want to do is unplug everything. So blue to blue. Be very careful of that part, because again, it, it, it does snap off not the end of the world if it does so. Then you need to pull out the cable and sort of ow, push off the live terminal from the switch which in this case is wrapped around the top. There we go and I'll pop that back in there because the switch is a complete pain to get out of this so I won't wash that. I'll wipe around the top and get rid of that mark and wipe the cable down. But basically, we wrap that up. Diddly diddly do. Wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. It's twisting on me, a little sod. Oh, it's very warm. I've got the fan running. I'm hoping it's not ruining this video, but I'll be honest, if I don't have the fan running, I shall die. And nobody wants to see that either. Oh. Right. Next thing you should do is take off this cover on the live and I get a pair of circuit pliers and just really push hard to bend out the plastic cover and it might pop off. The other thing is a small or your bent screwdriver depending if you've gone to all the effort of buying one. It is quite handy but it is doable without. There's a tab at the back. Come on. basically just got to push the locking tab away from the spade there we go until it comes off I don't know if you can see there on the left or right whatever side you can see the plastic spade it doesn't matter pull it off however you want it's fine so once you've done that pull the spinal cable out and just drop it down until it will drop no further. Oh, I've moved. There we go. I'll turn the fan down as well because I ran out of my phone only do a few, well, a few minutes. It was in 4K mode, which is stupid because YouTube won't do that. So that first bit is going to look really good. Next bit, I dropped it back down to 1080 and it'll still look really good. But I've also turned the fan down and not the tripod so you're not level. Professionalism, what's that? So there we go. Hopefully the fan noise is a bit less as well, but I've got to have it on. It's really hot. So we don't have air conditioning in the UK as standard like you Americans. It's more of a rarity. I'd be rich to do that, but I'm not rich. Let's pull this forward a bit. So what next? Well, I take off these rubber seals. That one's quite perished and cracked. I might have another one of those. Not too bad though if I don't. And the other seal sits there and that just comes off as well into the bucket. Next we'll take the changeover valve. You lift that up. Now it's, it's held in by a tab on both sides. You squeeze the alternate sides and it just pulls it off enough pull out. There's a spring, you take that out, and the little seal in the top, that comes out as well, and all strips down nicely. So basically have the wash, that can go in the bucket. There is then a rubber seal, and on a DCO4, a big plastic circuit. Into there it goes, right. Oh, I've lost it. Ah, there it is. <laughs> 
screwdriver over there. Let's take the post motor filter off. And you put your screwdriver in there. So I'll move back so you can see what I'm actually doing. Got across a bit. There we go. Screwdriver in there and pull. Oh, I went for that. Actually, no. I was going to be cheeky and wash that, but it is falling apart. So that, go in the bin. That, we can go in the wash. Next out at this stage is the diffuser. Just because we are here, this has some black screws. But again, they're the same size as the other ones. It doesn't really matter where they go. At all. So there we go. And that just lifts off into the parts box. Don't chuck everything around. I'm just being silly. Right, this is the clutch knob, as you all should know. You take that off, you just get the screwdriver behind it and lever top and bottom, and eventually the two plastic tabs with a bit of persuasion will release. I, I've never broken one of these before, so you should be lucky. Occasionally a bit of plastic's chopped off there, but it's fine. Again, don't refit this until you're sure everything works. If you've got to rebuild that clutch or get the motor back out, this has to come off. Don't do it more than you have to. Right, I think. Ruby glass of water before the inevitable happens. We need to get underneath it. Right, that's an even worse position. Oh, while we're here, we'll take the U-bend off and with a twist in one direction the clip comes off as well and we can take the base plate off one two three there's that next with your trusty screwdriver I always pop out the wheels because then you can de-fluff them. Sometimes these are jammed solid with just rubbish. So pop these out. You don't have to. It's also how you replace them. So if you if you if you need new wheels, you can still buy the kit. They're the same sole plate wheels as everything else. Oh, the screen's gone blank. There we go. I'll sort that out on the next video. Stop. Okay, they just. Flick out, be gentle, you don't want to break the base plate. So that one's jammed solid. We'll sort those out later. Let's get it apart and get it washed. Oh, right, ah, see, I've just damaged that. I've just ripped the plastic. But it's fine, we'll glue that up. Let's just be a bit more careful. Uh, yeah, well, it's gone anyway, so we'll take that off. We'll glue that back on last. Come on, you sod. This is the problem with DCO4s. They're of the age now. A few people commented on the initial video of this. They're of the age now. Where they are getting quite fragile. Although well, parts are still thunderously cheap and plentiful for them. You see, that one's very solid. Uh, that's going to need a new wheel, I can't move that. That's rusted on completely and it, eventually it will wear down so much it will wear the rubber off. So we will need to go and obtain some more wheels, but only one I think. So there we go, we'll glue that bit back on, or maybe not, it probably isn't worth it. I never take those out because I think you have to ruin the plastic to do it. Ooh. Well, that's nice. Let's lift the belt. So, belt lifter. Pull the belts that are so stretched I can, I could do it with my finger, but I won't because I'm at the right angle to get the weight on it. And we'll take the, I've seen worse, I'll be honest. I've seen a lot worse. We'll take the brush roll off and let me pause and get a bin and we'll clean it all off because we don't want to be washing people's hair do we that would be silly 
the only hair I wash is my own. So we get a knife. I literally just cut it all off. This is a very therapeutic job. You should do this quite regularly anyway, I'll be honest. I've seen them so bad you can't see the brushes. So to slice through it all, you will wipe the brush well, but would worry about it. And just pull all the hair off, really. That's as simple as that. Just pull, pull, pull. If it's really bad, you need to get into all the tufts of the brushes. Get it all clean. You could just buy a new brush roll, they are peanuts. The brush roll for this is the same for Clutch Dyson, it's the same as DCF3, DCF4, DCF7, 14, and 33. So and they're only about 8 quid for the whole kit with bearings and end caps. But we'll save ourselves £8 and just cut off some blonde, dark blonde, light brown hair. No big deal, is it? Especially if it's your own hair. If it's your own hair, you've got no freaking excuse at all, you dirty beggar. Don't let your brush roll get so bad. Obviously, us collectors have to take a deep breath and just get on with it. Because obviously, us collectors don't get our brush rolls getting this day, do we? Mm -hmm, you do. I do. I've been known to do it, especially with Amy. And Eva's long hair. So, there we go. That's as good as it needs to be. A lot better. Take your end caps, hold one side and twist and pull. And they'll come off. Then twist and pull to get the other end cap off. Then take your bar, stick it just inside the bearing. I'll do it over the bin and just sort of wiggle it about a bit. And eventually with a load of other smeg, the bearing will come out, which it, ooh, which it damn nearly sees. So that's good. I'll show you how to oil your bearings later. Do this one, which is a lot better, I'll be honest. Pull the hair out from around it. Job done. I always put my bars in my toolbox. That can go in the washing box. And then... We can take the belt off the lifter. We don't need that anymore for now. Next thing we need to do is to release these two plastic circuits. And we find an edge, get the screwdriver just under one edge, and twist until one edge pops up. Then just move them around. Eventually, your plastic circuit will fall off. Same on the other side. There we go. Then hold the machine like that, pull the internal, oh this should have gone through the wash as well. Then what happened? There we go, otherwise I've got another wash to do. Fail. Uh, we'll take it off in a minute. Then, with the machine still upright, take your screwdriver and ever so gently insert it as far to the edge as you dare and very gently lever. I will reiterate very gently because otherwise you will snap off one of those and it's a pain. So there's your internal hose. If your machine doesn't work very well, this is say for all that white Dysons, this is knackered. In fact, you can see it's a bit bent now. That should be straight and really springy. This is quite floppy. That's what pushes the head onto the floor. Somebody has given me a tip that you can glue weights to the top of this, but I don't have any of those to try. It's a very good tip though, and I shall be trying that as soon as I buy some. But these, once through the washing machine, the plastic sorts itself out and makes it a lot better. But I forgot, so we'll pop that over there. This, there is a rubber seal just in the front and at the back, which I don't always take off, but for the purposes of this video, I will. So there we go count yourself lucky. Now we need to take the clutch out and there is a clutch cover just there. There you go look. This is where you need a long screwdriver just for this one screw actually because at the back in this hole here is the rear clutch screw. There it is. 
10 centimeters you need for that. Hello. It's the only long screwdriver you need, but you, you do need a 10 centimeter one. So there we go. And the clutch cover just pulls out and then fiddle it around off the motor spindle. And there is your clutch cover. Pull the belt guard, belt pulley. It, it stops the belt rubbing on the back bit. And drop that in there. Oh, there's a lot of rubber in here. Pop the motor to clutch belt off. Take both belts in your fingers and pull quite sharply. And off it comes. This hasn't got a date on it. Sometimes they have a date on those, but this one doesn't. So we will rebelt that later. Now the clutch is off, we can pop this down again. Then you get your fingers under the edges. Uh, I'll get my fingers where you can see under where you took the circuits off. Pull both out and lift it off. And there we go, there's your keen ahead. There's a wheel on this part, that's what helps it ride up the groove. We'll grease that up in a bit because that helps things tremendously. Now we need to take the rest of the changeover valve out. And first things first, there is a rubber seal there, that's what the banana goes on to. Next, we need to take the locking part out. And to take the locking part out, you get your screwdriver just at the top of the edge and just push down and it pops the plastic tabs out and out it falls there's a spring there that you need to remove the next thing to do is to actually remove the pivoting part and you just pull that just off enough for it to change position get your screwdriver push up slightly from the bottom and either side are two quite fragile plastic clips. Pop those and then tease the ring past the chassis and it should all come out. Take that off and there's your two halves of the changeover valve assembly. There are two plastic rings there, they keep the cleaner head from banging around but I don't take those off, there's no point. What we need to do now is remove every screw that we can see. There's one, two, three, four, if I can find it blind, I can't, there it is, four. Oh, these are quite rusty actually. Slightly better screwdriver than that. That's well more than that screwdriver. And if the screws aren't perfect, it doesn't like it. So this one is quite new. Well, I say new, I, I just barely use it. And can bite a chewed head or a head full of rust and gunk a lot better. So, where are we now? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh. Eighth and final one. And now the motor lifts off of the chassis. This is the main suction duct, obviously on the later Dyson's the filter is here. It will now lift up and be removed. And I can show you a DCO4 Achilles heel. Around here is a rubber seal obviously suctions it to the cyclone and the problem with this rubber seal is that it perishes I don't think I, I, I rarely get ones that come out properly you can't buy the rubber seal on its own so when we reassemble it we'll stick a drop of glue around it basically glue it to the chassis it'll be fine nobody's going to care before we get onto the motor we need to take the wheels off so here's your screwdriver Pop the glamour cap off. Then there is a circlip holding the wheel on. And to get to the circlip, 
you insert your screwdriver on one side gosh this is quite difficult to do back to front hang on basically you put your screwdriver in and you twist and it will push off the circuit there we go there's a washer as well a spacer washer then the wheel comes off and there's a washer behind it as well once one side's off you can simply pull the whole axle through drop your washer in there and with the glamour cap still on just tap it to the floor and it pops the glamour cap off then pull the axle from the wheel drop your remaining washer in your parts box don't bother taking the circuit off there is no point drop it in your toolbox and that is the chassis spine back spine whatever you want to call it off of our Dyson we are getting there grab the ends of this and give it a tug and it comes off ready to be washed and now we can get onto the motor now this ran quite well so I'm hoping once we pop off these plastic tabs and remove the retaining ring that we're not going to discover that the motor is actually quite backward push down like that and pull off the seal and then pull out the motor and then pulling out the motor you need to pull the cable out of the inside pull it all the way through there is a stone in there and that's the motor out of its shell lovely jubbly right let's have a look at this motor which has been wet by the looks of it so we have a YDK YV uh, 511 what the hell that means it's the original motor it's seen some water damage but it will be absolutely fine you probably can't tell because I haven't got me, me lights on to say battery but the armature is lovely it spins very nicely obviously you all know what a knackered bearing sounds like from my big YDK strip down video that's fine that can go in the pile Right, we now need to get on with the Cyclone. And I can see the file size getting to its limit, which is 4 gig on a mobile device. So now we can start again. So, press the button, pop off the Cyclone. This is the dusty part. Empty the bin if you haven't already done so. And then grab the inside and just pop it out more dust in there I need to vacuum I need to do July's vacuum after this because I'm quite rubbish there's a rubber seal at the bottom that comes off first mm -hmm, look at that take off this top seal that said do not be moving to three different languages I don't speak languages but as it comes filthy already next open the lid and with your screwdriver you want to just pry apart the hinge doesn't take much there we go and once that's off simply undo the two screws in the lid two screws in the lid And then the whole thing should, once you've unstuck it, just lift off. The button release catch will fall out and there is a spring underneath it. Job done. Check your handle for cracks. This one does have a very small crack in it, so we shall give that some reinforcement soon. Right. There's two screws inside here. We want to remove both of them on here. You're getting the pattern here. If there's a screw, you undo it. Ooh, uh -huh. I have to hold it down so I can pull my fingers up. There we go. And then the cone will come out along with a load of other rubbish. 
which is still stuck in there. So you want to just scrape around and get the Kate Tom stuff off. This is the release valve. Now, I, you can fully strip it apart, but I'm not going to here because it's just a bit too much trouble that it's worth. All you need to do is pop off the top cover and then wash the rest of it as is because that's not too bad in there and you can pull that apart to flush a load of water through. Should we take it apart? Yeah, sod it. You will break the machine though. This is a given I'm afraid because you need to get your screwdriver and just sort of pry it up and eventually it will come but it does I'm afraid break a clip yeah it's already broken it which is fine that clip there always breaks but you can glue it back in it's all right so now we've got a hole there I'll put that there move that out of the way so this is the release valve of DCO4 and you want to, without stabbing yourself in the hand, pop out or pop off the back cover. Underneath there is this retaining piece here that holds the spring down, that makes it close. And then the actual diaphragm, that's why we're taking it out because you need to clean all that up really for optimum performance. So you don't have to bother. It did wash up okay. But for this video we shall. Let's take the crusty bits off. And then what you do is you brace yourself, hold this very sternly, and go bang! Like that. Preferably outside. <laughs> that takes off this part. The cone. And after the cone, there is just one more rubber seal which will be caked on. And there we go that ladies and gentlemen is that let me just unplug this and we can survey the damage not too bad that's why i have a bit of old carpet i need to go and have a wash but we have everything apart there is the non-washables the washables and the rubbish so, the next thing we need to do is wash everything, wait for the washing machine to finish with the hose, and hopefully, well, it'll be a few hours, but for you it'll be in about a millisecond, we can start putting it back together. Right, the next thing we need to do is rebelt the clutch. And to rebelt the clutch, we shall need some belts, our sockets, some circuit pliers and our ever trusty flat blade screwdriver. Now, oh and, 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 which I didn't get out before, a suitable size small Torx to get the screws out. Now I've done a full, in detail, strip down and refurbishment of a Dyson clutch so I'm not going to go and talk you through this one you can go and find that video if you need this is purely just for completeness and to make a full long video out of it there we go doopy doo there's all the balls Here's the old belt. Ooh. Now that's a bit worn, isn't it? Look at that. The plastic's coming away from the inner veg. Oh, it's just been melted. Can I bodge it? I think we can. Because I don't think I have any spare white wheels. So let's see if I can chip away this plastic. Like so. Hmm. I've never seen one do that before. Actually, the whole inner edge is just chipped away. Hmm. 
and the more I do this, the more I'm not terribly happy about doing it. Because as you can see there, it's melted a bit. It also seems to be missing... Oh no, it's there. Let me see what I've got in the shed. Bear with me. Hmm, well for reasons I can't quite work out, I have a clutch here that has fairly recent belts. It all seems to work fine. I think we should just give it a go. So we don't actually need this clutch at all, especially not with that wheel. I just don't trust it. It might sort itself out, but then again it might not. So really, I'm just going to bid all that. Don't need it. It's of no use at all. I'll keep those belts. And we'll call that job done, I think. Let's move on. Let's get on with the hose. It's come a bit cleaner. It's not perfect, I'll be honest, but it will do. For this, we will need some snips, some glue, which I think is actually somewhere else. I'll oh, never put me glue. Glue, yeah, ha. Some glue. Let's pop that there and a, a flat blade screwdriver. So, let's just double check there's no other holes that will write this off before we go to all the effort of doing this when actually it's pointless. No, we're all right. It's just this hole here. So, but a knife, a knife is also handy. Because what we need to do is Chop the hose, there's the hole. So we'll chop as close to that as possible. And just cut around until you've gone back on yourself, because we need to then cut the metal. So you get your snips, position them in there. And that's that bit cut off. We now just want to tidy up the end of the hose just a little bit so that when we screw it on it doesn't get in the way. So there we go, check you haven't cut anywhere you shouldn't have done. Jolly good. Now you want to again start this torn without cutting your fingers off because that would be quite silly. what we need to do now is pull this apart there we go so again you can use your snips as pliers or get some pliers you want to pull all the metal from this bit out because this is what helps jam it together so now we've done that, we need to take out the inner piece. And as you know, on a Dyson cuff, there's two tabs, one there, and there is one there. But luckily for us, it's already out. So all we should need to do is the one side. So we'll get a hammer. There we go. And everything has fallen out. So what do we have? Well, we have two springs. There. They make the relief valve move. There's a little rubber seal, so we'll spit on a rag and just wipe all that out. This is the rest of it. There's a button there that squeezes. In fact, no, that's the relief valve. This is the locking ring. My mistake. So if we take the button off and pop this out, you can see all the greb that will catch 
there and not make the best seal in the world so we'll clean that out clean the rubber seal there off just because why not and now we need to remove the bits of hose that are stuck on the cuff because obviously we need to we need to twist the new hose onto this so again without chopping your fingers off he says hopefully ow nearly slice off you do need to get it quite clean as clean as you can manage it anyway let me try it so you can roughly see what i'm doing there we go that works quite well for me too It's quite a long involved job, this, but you do have to do it right, otherwise it just doesn't, you'll regret not doing it right when you've done it wrong. Glued it all together and then have to smash the glue apart, basically. If you break one of the tabs, don't worry too much because you can bodge it together with glue, which I think is what we're going to have to do because that tab that wasn't fully in is broken. We'll see if we can stick a drop of glue on it. Right. Let me just, where's our little screwdriver? Try and chip away at the bit that's left. It should all let go eventually. He hopes out, nearly. So you want to get it as close to the plastic as possible. What I possibly should have done was get the bench grinder out. I've just tickled it with the wire brush just enough to flip the rubber off but I can't be bothered to get all that out now that might do it let's see how that works as long as the hose goes up to the back actually that'll be fine there we go so that will sit on there like that And provide our new hose end so we shall pop this back on and its little button like so he says but it doesn't push on there we go then we need the glue and just basically dribble it all around the top and it should work its way down the coils a bit because it only needs to glue the first coil or so and that should be enough now we need to put this back which is always good fun because the little springs are pain so you sit the plastic in first and you basically need to get those little springs in the ends and I find that if you drop it close and then do it on the carpet, so not if, when they fling out like that, you can catch them. They don't always come out if they don't come here's one. If they don't come out, I would not make them come out. Just be thankful. There we go. You may not see, but the springs are in each side. Oh be hose to the carpet we have missed one spring this little spring goes in here that makes the button bounce we must not forget that there we go and then basically push it all back together there we go click 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 one fixed hose don't pull it too much until you know the glue set this has a little crack on the cuff, so I'm just going to drop the tiniest amount of glue in there just to stop it from opening back up again. Check your bounce works. That's another thing to quickly check is to get the wand to make sure it knocks on. There we go. Perfect that will do so the hose is fixed the clutch is replaced with this hopefully good example 
from 2002. What should we put together next? I think we should have a look at the parts. Here they are, look. Yes, I've sat and polished it all up. Made it look all nice. So let's start with the release valve. Just because, why the devil not, eh? I think that's all the parts. Plus what's up here? What do we need from here? We need the springy spring spring and that's about it actually. Let's pop you back up there. Lay these parts out. And I'll try to remember how to do this. Yeah, it will be fine. So with the plastic bit up, you pop that in there like so the spring sits in there and this part snaps on top like so then you put the backing part on I don't know what it's called the only exponent diagram that shows this shows it as a complete unit but the user serviceable part it should be now we want to put the cap on and this is keyed. Those three tabs are different shapes and sizes. So all you do basically is just offer it up until they all line up and just push. And there we nearly go. Why aren't you going on? Come on. Ah, oh, I know why. I caught the plastic and I removed it so now it won't sit completely perfectly ah. maybe a drop of glue will sort that in fact it'll probably be all right anyway let's stick a little drop of glue on it that'll do it that's plenty we'll just hold that on there for a second there we go that's got the little sod screw you Right, oh, I do need to fetch something. Bear with. I forgot my grease. Because the next thing we should do is fix these bearings. And the way to fix the bearings is that we'll start with the seized up one first, so that if you hold your fingers in the middle, it barely moves. With your thin screwdriver, you want to pop the rings off like so both sides and the race is full of crud and that's what makes it not spin so you want to sort of poke out as much as you can you won't get it all out rub it on the carpet maybe also get a a stiff brush and just tickle all the rubbish that you can out of inside of there you basically need to force it to move by hand now you can't fix them all unfortunately but normally this works and once you've cleared it out as best you can just push the grease into the vase do a little bit to start with just so you don't make it so greasy you can't move it and you basically want to get it moving any way you can so we'll try sticking it back onto the rod that it once came from there we go that's bit and as you can see now It moves again, it's not smooth as it could be, it doesn't free spin. But that'd be good enough. So we'll pack it up properly, so literally maybe not that much grease. Stick a bit more grease in. 
just on one side then pop one of the caps back on then turn it around and fill the other side up just like so there we go that'll do it pop that one back on get a dirty rag bit of towel whatever not your nice ones rub the grease off and that spins a lot smoother now there you go that's that's just he's right off if i compare it to what we haven't done yet that feels very dry the difference is very good once you get it on the machine and run it up it'll be fine now because this one isn't seized i'm just going to grease up one side it'll work its way through the balls you don't have to worry too much about that This is just normal all-purpose motor grease. It was two pound from B and M. UK people should know what B and M is. It's the local tat shop, upmarket pound shop. There we go. Lovely. Let's test it. Let's put the brush roll back together. We need the end caps. And oh, we would also need just to check the brush roll housing because these only fit in one way. They're keyed, so when you put them in, they have to be at the right orientation to sit in. You can't just put them any which way. So this one goes this side. So we'll pop a bearing on there. For some reason, this is all messed up. So we'll slide it on from the other way, up to the top, pop the end cap on, give it a bit of a tap, push it in and it will push itself home, then put that bearing on, this bearing on, give it a good squeeze and check it spins freely. Look at that. Beautiful. And that will sit in there nicely, like so, and brush pile once more. So we're done with the grease, we're done with the glue, we are done with these tools. We need to assemble the machine again, so we need to get back out all of this that we used before. Now what else can I do while I'm here? Before... I move the camera so you can see the whole machine. Let's get the motor back together. So we need that, the ring, the rubber, the other rubber. We need to put the motor back together. So, pop your ring back on that end. Pop your rubber back on at that end. This will smear the grease on your fingers just to go around the inner of the plastic lip because otherwise it's almost impossible to put back on because it just grips so much that you can't do anything with it. Grab the spinal cord and push it through the hole like so. Make sure that your rubber grommet is coming out although don't push it fully home. And then turn it over because you need to line up, there's two plastic pins that line up with the two little holes. There we go. On the mount. Pull the cord out properly. Oh, uh-oh. Uh, I've just pulled the cable out of that. And I just want to check that I've, oh look, I pulled a wire off the motor. Schoolboy error. I'm going to try and get this on, it's all greasy. Damn it. Or dang it, as you Americans would say. There we go. Blue to black, brown to red. Let's push that on there like so. I've never had this rubber bit come off before, actually. 
that's a little bit annoying, but that'll do. I just won't put it again. That's in as far as it needs to go. Line up the tabs and push. And then pop the retaining ring on, which is keyed again. As you can see, there's a cutout that lines up with the top. There we go. So the motor is in and on. We may as well put the diffuser back in. Let's give your screw heads a rub off on some old carpet just to get the dust out of the heads. It'd be silly to go through all this effort and have dusty heads, wouldn't it? Go. One and two. Well, in fact, I know we could probably put the cyclone back together from this angle as well. Before I had to set it all back up at the top so you can see the whole machine. Although, actually, this might be a good way to put everything. We'll see how far we get. So we've got the motor, the hose, the clutch and the brush roll. Done. Let's see how far we get on the cyclone. And to do the cyclone we will need the release valve. Oh, the bin. The upper cyclone. The handle. The top. I think both of these round rubber seals lower cone, the upper cone and I think that might be it for now. Oh no! The shroud which had rolled off into the distance so these rubber seals are ever so slightly different. The bigger one goes at the top I think and the smaller one goes at the bottom they just slip on. Right, come on. Probably this one, it then wants to roll itself off. There we go. And then we'll put the do not remove seal back on. Nothing happened. Don't know what you're talking about. Shh. Might as well put these back in the bin. And I find it best to get intimate with this part. Oh, it's dirty already. What am I doing? What to wash my hands? Dirty from touching the motor. Just dampen the rubber seal, lick it, a bit of rag, whatever. Push it down, and that's that done. Uh, I don't have any baby wipes handy. Damn it. Rub my hands off. Right. Put the shroud on the cone is a lot simpler than taking it off. Hear that crack? That's it on. Double check by sort of spinning it vaguely around. We need to put the release valve back in. Not forgetting that we did break it, getting it out. So we will need a drop of glue actually. Like I say, it, it doesn't really matter. You, you don't have to take it out. Obviously it will suction itself better. Well, actually that's holding itself in quite well. So we don't need glue on that. Sometimes just use a little drop of glue in the back up there. Where are we? Just where the clip went. But we don't in this case. So that's very good. But to put the cone, the cyclone in, this part here is what sits up against the valve. So stick it in and you can see through the two screw holes just to twist. Oh, we've popped it off. Maybe we should put it back on afterwards, that's probably actually easier. Ah oh, yes, because then I can show you that it also locates itself there, that sticky outy bit. 
is what locates. So we'll stick that there. We'll pop its two screws in. Doesn't really matter which screws we use. Just want to hold the sod in. Really. Oh, I have forgotten to get the filter off the washing line. We'll do that in a minute. One. Two. It's a bit odd doing screws up with my left hand. Now we'll try and put the relief valve back in. And say, oh, it, it popped out because I caught it. There we go. You know what? Let's just stick a small drop of glue, say here, just to hold it. And we hope that works, so we don't have to take it back out again and break that glue. Right. Oh, I have forgotten one more thing. We need the release clip for this next part because we need to get this handle back on here. And the way I find to do it is you get the small spring and you just sit it in its hole like that. Then the spring sits on that dimple there. So you line it all up, put it in and you hold it with one hand while you get the handle. Well I have glued up that small crack already and you sort of just lower it down on top and then it will hold itself. And then you get two more screws. I always screw the front down first. Just because then it holds itself. Like so. Then you can let go at that point, you see, and put the back screw in. Which is a lot better. Okay. Now let me go and get the filter, which is sat just behind the door. Now, do you remember that black, horrible, disgusting, dirty filter that we had? Well, there is that bit now. The little sticker has started to come off, so we'll finish that off. Nobody actually cares or needs it. And there's the foam. The very self-same foam. With a bit of a peg mark, but that'll come off. That is the black, disgusting foam after being through the washing machine they don't always come out like this they can break apart i've had them shrink as well but it's well worth giving it a go because look that is pretty much brand new and then all we got to do then is if i can flip you up without pinging my phone out pop the cyclone back together and there we have one done cyclone. I'm, I'm, I was having and knowing about taking the sticker off, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave it because I'm lazy. Right. Chassis. And while we're at this angle, we'll do certain parts of it. We shall pop this bit on. And obviously, the rubber seal broke on here. I put that down there, can you still see it? No, hang on. I normally use the side of the sofa for this, but I can't because that's where you are. So I've got my toolbox there. And then you can lean the chassis up, spider there, and it all works quite well. So, back out with the glue. Just run a bead around the edge. You don't need too much. And stick it home 
There we go. That should do it. Because there's two stepped bits inside of both of there that suck together. And that's plenty. Little bit of lubrication around there. In fact, we just put this first. That just put, that just pushes straight on there like that. And then you can push it home. He says he's not doing it square. Oh no, that hasn't done well. More glue. Don't want to put so much on it. All runs down the side, but then again, equally. I might just have to get in the way a second because this needs to go on quite squarely to go in that side it's getting caught because that that bit isn't going behind that bit hang on mind my head there we go it should push down nicely you see it should just go in and be good start the cable off on its new way up just to push it out the way and then we need to get all of these screws back out three four five there were seven wasn't there what nine but a few of them some else but they're all pretty horrible I'll be honest they're all a bit icky not icky just r rusted you can't see anything of that angle there we go but I think in the top of my toolbox I have a few. Yes, I do from various machines that I've worked on and not needed the screws. So we'll pick the best out of all of them, throw the rest away. And basically, it is as simple as just screwing it back together. We use a silver one here. We use a black one here. And we shall leave that for just a second. Whilst we test it. Because as you just saw, it's very easy to pull the cables out of the motor. And it is a right pain in the backside when you put it all back together. Literally, you fitted everything back, and it doesn't bloody work. So, at this stage, hook up the switch, making sure that the terminals are apart. Turn the switch on at the switch and plug it in, and we'll see. I'll just give myself a friction burn on the cable if it runs. Ready? Lovely! Unplug it! Pull these back off. Pop the cable to one side. And basically carry on. Carry on doing up the screws, safe in the knowledge that it run, because otherwise you basically have to get it to this stage. So that's brush roll off, clutch out, brush roll housing off. It's a right old sod. So like I say, if you test it at this time, oh hang on, we've got the cable trapped. That's not going up fully through its little hole so we'll just back out these top screws he says if he could get the screwdriver into said top screws uh, we'll have to back off this one otherwise it won't sit right and then the cyclone won't sit right either which is more of a pain than you think it is it will jam on. There we go. That'll do it. It has to sit properly in its channel 
because then it all slots into place. So the D, a dice, any dice really, it's just like a beer Lego set. Everything clips in, everything has its place. And if you don't clip it in so it has its place, it doesn't work. I've had DC-14s where the bit under there gets caught on itself and the machine won't go up right. It took me about half an hour of swearing at it, asking it why it wasn't working. There's the rusty screw. Everything I could think of to work, you know, to try and get it to work. And it was just that, ooh. Oh, I dropped the screw. Uh oh. Yeah, lucky. I nearly dropped a screw down into the motor. Don't recommend that because you can't take the whole thing apart again because you can't leave a screw rattling around in the motor because obviously if it catches. Best case, it will just short something out and blow the fuse. Worst case, it will rattle around and destroy the motor. And we don't want that because I can't be bothered to buy this a motor. Not when it's got a perfectly working one already in it. Diddly diddly do. You'll be a lot quicker at this. If you are, I don't know if people actually follow this to do this. I know some people have for my DC25 video. And well done you. I think a few people have for my DC24 video. I haven't had any comments about the 14 video, apart from the people that watch it because they are vacuum cleaners, which is pretty cool. But if you do follow these, it's not as tricky as you might think. I'm only taking my time because I'm talking to you. I can have this done in about 40 minutes if I literally just bashed it all together very, very quickly. But because I'm showing you things, it takes a little bit longer. Right. We will push the cables. You need to do the terminals one at a time. And then you might be lucky, you might not. The cable sheath gets caught. That's just pulled through, but sometimes it can get jammed up in there. You just need to wiggle it about it, really. And then push the spinal cord, use your screwdriver, because that, that, that's quite good at doing it. Back into the channel. Really? Up, out of the way, like so. Right, changeover valve next. Yeah, up you go. And we need some parts. We need that seal, that bit, that bit, that bit, and that bit. And, um, well, and we will need that bit. I think that's it. We certainly don't need much at the minute because all we've got to do is put it onto the machine. We also need this spring. The one that went on this part. Like that. So, this seal that we took off quite early on has to go on first. And there's two holes. That is the one that the hose goes on. And that one with the lip is where this seal goes. Let's put it on around the lip, like that. So it's on, basically. And again, this only goes on one way because there's two different ends. The end with the proper clips goes at the back and the two catches go on the front. And when you hold it like that, obviously you can then orientate this. Sidey, sidey, sidey. There we go, so it's a bit fiddly, but again, once you get the knack of it, you put the back, you need to sort of get the whole thing in, then pull it forward, push the back clips on, he says, come on, there we go, until the back lines up, can I show you, ish, and then you just push the front down while sort of manipulating that back onto where it needs to run and eventually if we go and it will be very floppy because you need to put this piece on next and it will go in like that with the spring at the bottom 
and the kicker at the front. Squeeze the tabs in slightly, but once you push it in, it will literally just find its own place. And you should see the spring nicely centered behind the little slot. And then you can test this by pulling up, that needs to lock until you push that down, which is normally pushed down with the brush roll head, and then it unlocks it. So click, upright, down, reclined, basically. Click it up and leave it up. In fact, while we're here, I'll show you the knack to put in the circlip on. And the knack for putting the circlip on is it's a sod. You put the circlip on first, and then you start feeding the lip of the ring around it. So do one bit, then twist the whole knot, do the next bit, twist whilst holding it on so it doesn't pop off. Twist, and then that's, I can now see both sides, where my fingers are, it's not on. So you can literally just push it in, and it's on. Give it a bit of tug, check it's not going anywhere, lovely. The next thing I'm going to do, which I just realised would be a thunderously good idea, is to put the wheels on, because then it will actually sit up. So working from the side that we didn't take the circuit off, it's washer. Little smear of grease where the wheel runs to avoid squeaky wheel syndrome. Then pop a wheel on. Spinny. Then another washer. Then push it through the axle. You don't need to grease where it goes through the machine because that bit doesn't spin. Then from this side we want a tother washer. Another little drip of grease. Only a lot, just enough to stop it from squealing. Oh, that's a little bit wobbly, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, well, it'll be fine. Then you want the last washer. And then the circlip. And the neck with the circlip it is a nice pair of pliers or I use my crimper because it's quite handy uh, if I move the camera it's probably going to make it worse basically you sit the circlip on top of the wheel axle on its groove well oh, that hasn't worked you basically push it down so whatever tools you have a nice pair of pliers work well, but these do do the job as well. There we go. Push it on until it clicks. And goes all nicely down. Then we'll stick the glamour caps on, which are here and here. And we probably should have done that before doing the relief valve, because then that now sits and doesn't need to be lent up on your crappy old toolbox. Right. Clean ahead. Lay the thing down. Pull the tabs out just a little bit. Sit it on. And upright. We'll put the clutch on next and hope to God that this wasn't off of a machine for a reason. I do rebelt them sometimes and leave them, so I imagine that's what I've done with this. Put the motor belt on first, and then push the unit, lay the machine down, and you need to line up. The housing sits in a groove, like that. And then when it's pushed home, you will know because it will look like that. See that little lip there? No, there. That bit slots into it, as does the bit of that bit that you can't really see because it's at a stupid angle. So once that's in, gently just rotate that belt by hand. Ooh, just to set just to level it up a bit. Then oh, I really must just pull all of this this side really. That would be the sensible thing because we'd added the clutch cover. 
and the metal peg, pin, whatever. Hold the machine back up to there. Put the top in first because it will just fit and slide around. There we go. Until it drops home. Keep it like that because we need to put the screws in. So we'll put one in here which pulls the whole thing because if that top one isn't just at the right angle it turns into a sod and even just doing that screw it's all pulled itself straight and true and lovely. I need to find another appropriate size screw and if you look through this bit you can see to feed the screw he says into the hole there we go and then just do it up and then the last one into there like that right where are we now i'm just going to pause to get the sole plate wheels out of the shed because we'll need those in a minute right I have my trusty DCO7 box, or my trusty Dyson box as it really is. So first we need to put the hose on, and on an 04, 07 is different, on an 04 it just pushes on. You can fit the more generic style hose, but it's a bit of a faff. Then push it into there. Uh, and then very carefully push this on you can see it's not bouncing terribly well and that's a because that hose isn't actually on there we go so at this end just give it a little twist that's not too bad so it'll, it'll be the suction will help it a little bit i probably should replace this hose but i don't have one but that there go, that's not too bad let's try and bless it it'll be fine we're not going for concourse here. I, I'll be honest, you probably should replace that one. But it's too late, we're not doing that. Now you need to lift the belts, which is going to be a tad more tricky because they're new. So with all your muscles, position your belt lifter and pull. Right. Pull your brush roll feed it through push it down pop the belt off and spin it by hand just the center everything up all nicely 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 now we need to put the sole plate seals back in and you should be able to tell where they went because they'll still have the kinks in them so fit them as they were so you, you, you don't need to take them out really sometimes they do just fall out but a lot of the time they don't I say it's not it's not mandatory I'll be honest none of this is mandatory I wouldn't do any of it is for you to choose what you do with your vacuum cleaner I choose to do this to most of them and then sell it as fully refurbished which is what I should be doing after this very video so there we go that's in now we'll take our base plate and see which of these wheels are saveable now this one spins but I can't get it off the axle because it's just so rusted on. So that's a maybe. That one is fully seized. So that's a no-no. Now this one's all right because the axle's off. So get your grease stick if you have a grease stick. I highly recommend a grease stick. Just little drip. 
There we go. And we'll pop that one in here. You might need your screwdriver just to push. Click. Click. There we go. So this next one, that one spins okay. So little drip of grease, push it on with the wheel, lay it on. There you go. Sometimes they go in by hand, but you don't want to put too much force on because you'll crack the base plate and click. So there's two. <laughs> it's like a DJ, isn't it? And then number three, that spins, that's good enough. This will drip of grease. Yeah, a bit too much there, get that off. And push. So now we need two more wheels, so we'll get our parts box. And I do, oh, I've got three left. I think there's another couple of packs in the shed. This is all the random bits. I've got more in the shed. This is just what I keep on me in a handy box. That money is for undoing those, actually. There's 30p in there. That's my emergency fund. And then, oh. You're more likely to find these wheels on eBay on the DCO3 soul plate wheels for some odd random reason, but they fit any dice. And there we go. And let's see if I can keep this rather snazzy angle. Just for now, we're going to have to move in a minute because I need to go higher up. You fit the base plate. Why is this then not going on? That's right. Fit the base plate to the machine. We still don't know if the clutch works. That's in the back of my mind is a scary thing, I'll be honest. I'm hoping it does. We'll find out in a minute. While we're at this rather unique angle, we'll pop the new bend back on. So push the clip on, like so. And as simple as like click it didn't click but you know what I mean and that is done don't fit the clutch cover yet as I said earlier until we have tested it oh I need to stretch hang on we shall lob an air freshener in these are just cheapy eBay air fresheners but I quite like them the people that buy my machines quite like them. We'll take a brand new post filter. Pop that in. Then we'll take the housing cover, line up the little bit at the front and push it down. Getting there. Right. We'll put these seals on next. So, go. This one here. This one here. So these are as simple as just pushing it on, really. There we go. Oh, we need to put the actual valve back together for the changeover valve. So, you take the end of that and the seal which has two little crescent tabs and you basically just line those up and push it down there we go put the spring in there and then you can see that that part and that part are different that part goes to the base of the machine so like that basically Check that you haven't got the rubber seal caught in there and that it bouncy, bouncy, boingy, boingy. Oh, I think I've lied to you. 
That part goes on the outside. The bit that makes it work, basically, the, it's quite simple. Ooh, we forgot our circlips. I say forgot. You can put them on any time, really. They just push back on. It's not mission critical if you don't put these on, I'll be honest. It doesn't exactly fall off. But we shout. And now we need to wire up the cable. I wonder how long my foot can stay there for before it hurts like buggery. So. Uh, there's a cut out there where obviously that part sits. No, I can't hold that like that. I got ah. There we go. So obviously that will eventually sit down there like that. But to wire the cable up, you need to have it out. And you can just see the kinks where it used to go. And all you do, basically, is just line those kinks up. It's not an exact science, so don't worry if you don't get it spot on. I'll say if you snap this bit off it's fine and then once you've done that so you just push the cables down into the little chase like so then we need this part here and clip it back over the spade connector like I think so yeah, I just need to push it a bit more. There we go. And then wire it back up again. So up with that mains flex. Push the spade terminal back onto the live. Tuck the cable through its little hole. Then pop the mains cable back down. Plug the neutral in. Push the cable through its little slot make sure it's all sort of tucked out of the way and not touching anything else and then slide the whole thing home oh, why are you coming out come on you little sod uh, ah there we go and it should in theory slide straight in it will bounce out a little bit that's why you need to put your screw back in uh, which I might just have to do off camera because otherwise I can't see it. Let me get it started, hang on. Longer screwdriver, really. Let's make this a little bit easier. Hey, and that's just putting that down nicely until it closes the gap. Don't put the switch back in straight away. But we can now put the cyclone on. Ta da! Looking like a Dyson again! Yay! So we have four more pieces of. Oh, hello. You can't see nothing. Four more pieces of plastic, which is for the wand. And we'll start off with the cap so you get your spring. Stick it to the wand because it's just a bit easier. You need to pop those two bits in first and they go up there. So you put that up there. Check that the little spring holder is centered on the actual catch and just push down. Check it does its thing, job done. Now I always get this bit wrong. We need to put the spring back in first and I think it goes in this way around. Hang on. I think it goes like that. But again, there's a very simple way to find out. You just give it a go. You'll soon know if it is wrong because it won't work. Then we need to set the spring. And I have lost my spring setting screwdriver. Hello. Where's it gone? Oh, this one might do it. You basically need to push the spring into the little slot. Oh. Hair. 
Right. There we go. Uh, how can I show you? Oh, nearly, nearly. There we go. You can see that that is sat in there. And that's what makes it snap backwards and forwards. So, we can fit the hose. Click. Uh, hit. We can fit the hose to the wand and push it up. Get the cable out of the way. And if I just lift you up, we can fit the wand to the machine. And we are done. Let's test this out. Here we go, I've cleared a bit of space. Let's hope the clutch works. Ah! Boop, 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 boop. Hit. Ta da! Right, it hasn't blown up, which is always a fairly good sign. Tap mark! Quite as suctiony as I think it could be. Right, there is, this is why I don't always do these. We haven't quite put that back together properly, so it's losing air. So bear with me, I'll have it all apart. I won't film it. And I'll just see if I can tweak it up a bit. Well, that may not help. Aha, uh -huh. I'm just going to tidy up. That's where I chewed it up. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. And the verdict is... Utterly fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. So, we can put the clutch cover back on. We can put the switch back on. It's going to turn on. And I can wipe that out. And we shall do a wrapping up video part. It will be the same video, so it will just be the wrapping up part. Hang on. So just a few more tweaks, it's missing its clip. And I happen to have a green clip here. So uh, let me set this down, because I'll need both hands in a minute. Let's put it there, that'll do nicely. Again, I use these very handy pliers, which seem to do everything. There we go. A bit dirty. Buff, buff, buff. Buff, buff, buff. Now I can finish wrapping the cable up. It looks green, but who cares? It's fine and better than not having one at all. Then I have found some tools. So we'll have a crevice tool and a hoostry brush, which fits. And I just need to angle it. Hang on. A dusting brush. 
And there we have it. How to take a very much almost not working DCO4. Let's be honest, you take that to the tip. If that worked like that, wouldn't you? A lot of, well, a lot of vacuum cleaners that I get work like that. Like this one. But as you can see, with a few hours work, I mean, you could have put a new motor in it. They're only £13. And A, it'd be 200 watts more. B, you would know you wouldn't have to go back in there for a while. But even just to make it work as it would have done from new. That is the process. Well, that's my process. I'm sure other people have other ways of doing it. And that's fine. Because everybody has their own way. And I can also incorporate the after refurbishment video. Because as you can see, it looks a lot different now. Oh, there's another bit of dirt there I've seen. Hang on. There we go. Talking to Mr. Pneumatic Collector earlier, who had a machine in a similar state to how this was. And we were both agreeing that it seems with an 04 that the worse they are and the more covered in rubbish they are, especially carbon dust. DC04 seems to spill a lot of carbon dust. It seems to protect them because this one isn't actually faded. Yet it looked really quite bad. I mean, there's a little bit at the top. I'm not going to lie. It, it is a bit faded. But compared to what it looked like before, I think you'd agree that this is now ready for another 15 years of work. I don't know if anybody's still watching this right at the very end. I expect there will be some. Fair play to you if you are. Thank you very much. It's what keeps me going. I won't tell you to subscribe because I don't really care if you do or you don't. I don't do this for the subscriptions. I do it because I enjoy it. If you want to subscribe, feel free. If you don't, I love you all the same. So... Thank you very much for watching. This is going to be a very long video, I think. I'm not going to edit it all together and upload it. So, until next time, thank you and I'll see you soon.